born on 4th of June, 1870. As the fifth of the 13 children to August Robert Hesselblad and Kajsa Peter Stodder Dag. Lutheran parents from Faglovic, province of Vastragoda and she was baptized the following month and was received into the Lutheran Church of Sweden in her parish of Huding. By 1886, she had to work to help them make ends meet. At first she looked for work in Sweden, but eventually emigrated to the United States of America in 1888, where she studied nursing at Roosevelt Hospital in New York City, while there. She did home nursing, which brought her into contact with the Catholic faith of many of the poor for whom she cared. Mother Hesselblad approached Father Hagen and asked that she be received into the church at once. My dear daughter, how could I do that? I have just met you. My father, forgive me. But I have fought in darkness for twenty years. For many years I have studied the Catholic faith and have prayed for a strong faith. I now possess this faith. And I am ready to submit to an examination on all the points of doctrine. I see no reason not to receive you unto the church. Today is August 12th, and the 15th will be the feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That day, I will receive you into the Catholic Church. The following Sunday, the 17th, you will be able to receive Holy Communion. She developed an interest in that faith, while deep prayer and personal study led her down the path of conversion. And on 15th of August 1902, the Feast of the Assumption, she received conditional baptism from a Jesuit priest, Father J. G. Hagen, in the chapel of the Georgetown Visitation Monastery in Washington. Father Hagen also became her spiritual director. As she reflected on that moment, she wrote, In an instant the love of God was poured over me. I understood that I could respond to that love only through sacrifice and a love prepared to suffer for his glory and for the church. Without hesitation I offered him my life, and my will to follow him on the way of the cross. Two days later, she received her first communion and would depart for Europe. Hasselblad then made a pilgrimage to Rome, where she received the Sacrament of Confirmation. She also visited the house of Saint Bridget of Sweden there, where the medieval saint had spent the last half of her life, which made a deep impression upon her. At that point she felt called to dedicate her life to the work of Christian unity. She returned to New York City briefly, only to go back to Rome. Where, on March 25, 1904, she was welcomed as a guest by the nuns of the Carmelite Monastery housed there, Mother Hedwig, the prioress, welcomed her after hesitating to accept her due to her weak health. However, she allowed her on the condition of a period of probation. Yet, it was at this point she fell gravely ill and even had to receive the extreme unction. She slowly recovered and held out against her family's pleas to return to Sweden. She petitioned the Holy See to be able to make religious vows under the rule of the order which Bridget had founded, and had been a prominent presence in the church in Sweden before the Protestant Reformation had taken hold there. She received special permission for from Pope Pius X in 1906, at which time she assumed the Briatine religious habit including its distinctive element of a silver crown. She professed into the hands of Hagen on June 22, 1906, the Feast of the Sacred Heart. The love Elizabeth had for Saint Bridget, Great Saint was so intense that nothing could prevent her from trying her utmost to revive this great and noble religious order. And though she faced many disappointments in her attempts still her heart was replenished when in 1911 8 September Mother Elizabeth began the new branch of the new Briatine order with four postulants who arrived from England. 
Mother Hesselblad's tireless efforts resulted in the order flourishing. And many houses being established throughout the world. In the year 1936 the first community in India was formed with four postulants. On March 4, 1920, she became abbess of the Order of the Holy Saviour, which was canonically established. During 16 years of struggle, Mother Elizabeth, who referred to herself as a useless piece of wood, laid the foundation for an edifice destined to work continuously for the glory of God. She assigned her religious three goals, contemplation, adoration, and reparation. We highlight Saint Elizabeth who exemplified the qualities of our biblical heroine Queen Esther. In John 15 13, we learn that. Greater love has no one than this. To lay down one's life for one's friends. Our courageous saint took that behest one step further. By laying down her life, not for her friends. But for the people who were. Most dangerous to help in her lifetime, Jewish people under Hitler's Nazi regime, horrified by the persecution of Jewish people at the hands of the Nazis. She hid at least 60 people in her convent in Rome during the Nazi occupation of Italy. While they hid under her roof, Elizabeth did not discourage them. From practicing their faith nor did she attempt to convert them. Rather, she built a makeshift synagogue right there for them in her Catholic, Brigidian convent. After the fall of the Nazis, Elizabeth was recognized as a righteous among the nations by Yad Vashem, a Jewish organization dedicated to preserving the memory of the Holocaust, for her courage in assisting the Jewish people. Like the courageous Queen Esther, Elizabeth risked her life to save people with less autonomy than her and reminds us every day, that a hero is courageous. On April 23, 1957 she gave her blessing to the sisters and held her raised hands in a solemn gesture in which she murmured. Go to heaven with hands full of love and virtues. She received the sacraments thereafter. Mother Elizabeth Hesselwood died in Rome on April 24, 1957 in the first hours of the morning. Many years after the death of Mother Hesselblad, the International Raoul Wallenberg Foundation in the year 2015, awarded the St. Bridget House in Rome as the House of Life for taking in the several Jews and saving their lives. The then Nabis General Mother Tekla received this certificate. In the same year, Yad Vashem who had given the title Righteous Among the Nations to Mother Hesselblad presented the medal, Mother Tekla received this on her behalf. On 4 February 1988, the Congregation for the Causes of Saints approved the cause and granted Mother Hesselblad the title of Servant of God. Mother Hesselblad was beatified on April 9, 2000 in San Pedro Square, Rome by St. Pope John Paul II.
Reverend Mother Maria Paula Barriga Mondragon. The then postulator of Blessed Mary Elizabeth's cause. Shared the dramatic story of the miracle that led to the canonization of Mother Hazelblad. Carlos Miguel Valdez Rodriguez at the age of two was diagnosed with tumor in his brain. According to Mother Paula, Carlos Miguel began suffering from headaches, vomiting, insomnia, and other problems. Examinations diagnosed the presence of tumor in the child's cerebellum. Two surgeries resulted in no substantial improvements in Carlos Miguel's condition, on the contrary. There were neurological complications which crippled him. The overall prognosis was unfavorable. Carlos Miguel suffered for months. With continual transfers from one hospital to another. In attempts to solve his worsening. Neurological and physical symptoms. The healing of little Carlos Miguel. According to Mother Pala, began immediately. After the imposition of the relic of Blessed Maria Elizabeth. As the child was taken from the Briatine convent to his maternal grandparents' house. During the trip, he started to move his limbs in a way impossible for him to accomplish before. Carlos Miguel's mother, Erezi Rodriguez Hernandez, recounted. On the return trip we prayed the rosary and at a certain moment of the trip I could see that the child bent the elbow of his little arm. I had the impression that everything was commencing to change. Positively and this increased our faith and our hope. Soon the child could walk without assistance and was able to get up and down stairs. He had no relapses and within a few days fully recovered his neurological and physical functions. To the great astonishment of the medical staff who were taking care of him. For Mother Pala, the connection between the invocation of Blessed Maria Elizabeth and Carlos Miguel's healing is clear, the miracle occurred in 2005 and was investigated in the diocese of its origin in Cuba in February 2014 and was validated in Rome on June 20, 2014. In April 2015, the Medical Council of the Vatican's Congregation for the Causes of Saints examining the diocese's inquiry, interviewed the neurologists, pediatricians and also the religious and laity who were directly involved in this case and who have witnessed this extraordinary event, recognized that the healing was swift, complete, lasting, and inexplicable in light of current medical science. On December 14, 2015, Pope Francis approved the second miracle attributed to Mother Elizabeth Hesselblad and canonized her on Sunday, June 5, 2016. Saint Elizabeth ignited a fire in the hearts of her daughters, many were inspired by her love and devotion. The Briatines order grew from strength to strength and has its presence in many countries, USA, Mexico, Cuba, Europe, Middle East, India, Philippines, and Indonesia. She devoted herself to fostering the unity of spirit within the order. 
The Lord has called us from different nations, but we must be united with one heart and one soul. In the divine heart of Jesus we will always meet one another and though we seek our strength to face the difficulties of life. May we be strengthened to practice the beautiful virtues of charity, humility and patience. Then our religious life will be the antechamber to heaven. Our religious houses must be formed after the example of Nazareth, prayer, work, sacrifice. The human heart can aspire to nothing greater. On this occasion of the 150th birth anniversary of our mother foundress, Saint Elizabeth Hazelblad, we look back with pride to the exemplary life journey of our mother. Saint Elizabeth's life was a continuous search for unity, as she is rightly called as the icon of ecumenism. Mother's virtuous life is an inspiration to all of us, her spiritual daughters, and we undoubtedly consider her as our mother and teacher. She is a captivating example of religious life, an epitome of humility, patience and charity. On this day, our prayer is that our mother continue to love us and inspire us until we complete our earthly journey and reach heaven with full hands, full of love, full of virtues. In her lifetime Mother Elizabeth communicated to her daughters through letters, which gave them hope, courage and inspired them to a greater devotion to our Lord. Her letters even today inspire and guide us to follow the path of seeking the Lord in humility and self-renunciation. Dearest Daughters in Christ, Seek always to have a great desire for perfection, to come to holiness. I pray Jesus to fill your hearts with a holy joy, my dear daughters, if I am far from you in person, I am with you all the more in spirit, 